I want to talk a little bit about the origins of Spring Thaw because that's quite important. It came out of that desire to do a Canadian play. We had uh, uh, 1948, and we had commissioned, well, we, I mean, Maver Moore and his mother. I was part of a repertory company of six actors, Lloyd Bachner, Bill Needles, uh, myself, Marco Christie, Bob Christie, and to Tony, Toby, Toby Robbins. This is Canadian Players. No. No, it was called the New Play Society. The New Play Society. People kept saying, where the hell is the new play? So Springthaus uh, uh, hadn't existed yet. We were going to do a play about Hugh McLennan's Two Solitudes, the great book about Frank, uh, French and English. And a, a guy was going to do it, Hugh, Hugh Kemp, was going to do Hugh McLennan's book. And we waited for the script. And he phoned and said, I, look, I'm sorry, I've got, I've got, I work in an advertising agency and I've got a big toilet paper account. I've got, I can't write the script. I can't finish it. And Dora said, what are we going to do? Maver said, there was a script by Tommy Tweed on radio last week. It was a comedy. It was about a strike in a, a department store. They didn't say the word Eaton's, but we know what they were talking about. And the title of the script was, It'll Never Get Well If You Pick It. <laughs> and what Mayra said, we'll do that on stage, and I'll write songs, and then each of you will do your party pieces. It was a book show the first year. Wow. Instead of a review. But I, I remember doing all the silent. I did Charlie Chaplin and Mary Pickford and, and all those people. And... Uh, and it, it sold out, whereas Sophocles and, and Shakespeare and Sean O'Casey did middling business. And where was the first Spring Thaw play? In the Royal Ontario Museum. And somebody said, what have you got that, that, that the Royal Alexandra hasn't got? They're doing uh, high-button shoes. I said, they don't do jokes, jokes about Young Street. And Canadians wanted to hear about Young Street. Right. Right. And they still do. And how That's long? my whole ba basis of my ca career. I mean, I go down to the States and I, ugh, I, it doesn't mean anything. Here, I mean something what, when I say something. Mm -hmm. you know? I don't know how important it is, but it makes people laugh. Has Charlie ever gone to the States? Oh, yeah. And, what's, and how does it work? This thing called Hee Haw? Of course, of course. Sesame Street for Grown Ups? Of course. Same 20-second attention span as Sesame Street. Only lasted 25 years. And did you, you alter the writing to suit that market? I did. We, yeah, we did general. Uh, I didn't do political humor, yeah. Oh, okay. So w for you, the general humor is human relationships, human problems. Gossip, yeah. Certainly. Gossip, right. Yeah. Oh, they didn't want political humor, so I mean, you know. And, and Laugh In, much cleverer show with political humor, lasted three years. H.L. Yeah. Mencken once said, nobody ever went broke underestimating the intelligence of the American people. That explains a lot of television. Sadly. Spring Thaw ran for seven, eight years? It ran till about 19... Well, there was a resuscitation about 71 or 72. Lorne Michaels was involved with it before he went to New York to do Saturday Night Live. And they had a nude crossing stage. It wasn't quite the old Spring Thaw. But as I said, they don't need Spring Thaw. They've got satirical television shows on every Rick Mercer, Air Farce, This Hour Has 22 Minutes. I did a series like This Hour Has 22 Minutes in 1973, the first year of the Global. It was called, Shh, It's the News. Right. And we did all, and we, and we also, and I, when I do, I do a show on stage now with David Warwick and my lady Claudette, and they do two sketches were written 35 years ago. One's about hockey violence, and the other is about the fact that we have no uh, air force. There is nothing like a plane that is relevant to the as they were 35 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I didn't ask about Valerie. Okay. Where did Valerie Rosedale came from? Barbara Hamilton. Barbara uh, played Hamilton. My, she played my wife, Valida. She and her curlers and me and my cap come back from the bathroom where we'd taken out our teeth and uh, we would comment on the various things that we want. I remember when Evil Knievel tried to cross that canyon on his motorcycle. And, and uh, I said, that e evil Knievel, and he, didn't, he didn't make it across. He said, no, and Barbara said, no, he muffed his dive. But we did all this stuff. And at the end of the season, she said, well, we're renewed for next year. I can't believe it. And she said, well, next year's International Women's Year. And I said, yeah, what do you want me to do, change sex? She said, yes. I'd like to play my father. I want to play it with a bald head and a big mustache, and you can be my wife. So I had to think up this character. And because how did you choose of, Valerie Rosedale? Instead of Charlie and Valida, it was Charles and Valerie, the town mice as opposed to the country mice. Wow. And I started getting jobs in drag. I still do. And I do it every time we perform a concert. I'm, I, Valerie's there looking like Camilla. I, I, I did it because I, I discovered an upper class Canadian accent. I'm so attuned to the way we speak that Valerie, every, every vowel is a diphthong on Canada Wednesday, you understand. And I thought that's what intrigued me about her. Yes, I mean, acting is a mask. You know about masks. The Greeks did it. And the theory of, behind Greek acting was that you sat in the dressing room and a god came down and took over and did it for you. That's what inspiration is. Jim Carrey is almost an ultimate mask. I mean, his very face moves about. His, his film, The Mask, is the best thing he's ever done. Yeah, because it was closest to a truth. Yeah. I first met him in a bookstore in Aurora, I think, or Newmarket, and 17-year-old Jim Carrey came in with a sweater and hat and glasses and did a pretty good Charlie Farkasson. Really? Yeah. You were signing books? Yeah. And so he decided to play Charlie yeah, to Charlie. Yeah, he was living in the car with his father at the time, he said. Because we met later uh, at uh, the Four Seasons. We were doing a benefit or something, and people were making much over a guy called Joe Piscopo because he was on Saturday Night Live. And Jim Carrey had just done a film called Earth Girls Are Easy about Martians or something. And he was just beginning to be noticed. And I, and we'd known each other, so I mean, uh, I, 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 I don't know, his, his, his greatness is in his manic mm -hmm. approach to comedy. Mm -hmm. People sort of say, oh, let him, he's now trying to be Hamlet, which is not mm -hmm. his metier. But I think of Eugene Levy, and I think of John Candy, and I think oh. of these people. There is something, I mean, you all share something in common in that the satire is there, the, the comedy is there, but, but there writers, is a broader based re, a humanity underneath yes. what all, all you wonderful kind of comics do, as opposed but, to a but, mean comedy but or such a writers, career comedy. But those improvisers. Yes. I've been lucky. Luck, luck. Luck and talent. And that you've danced them together Lucky very the well. Hutzpah, yeah. Thank you, Don. Okay. It was a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs>